Cricketers, welcome to Leading Edge Cricket Academy. Here we have two local guys in South Africa from Bangladesh who want to say to their Bangladesh and their friends all over in Bangladesh and yeah, they want to say some hello in their own language. Guys, say hello. Hi guys, everyone gonna be uh, subscribe this channel. Leading Edge. Leading Edge Cricket, Cricket Academy. Academy. You can uh, watch uh, all games there. You see the score, whatever, everything you can get there. This channel. Uh, hello, Bangladesh Shabai. Shabai channel to subscribe to Ben. And I can Bangladesh T20 World Cup. Jagula Degman, Jagula Shabula is Corfaben. Like Dekta Farben, a planet to subscribe to Ben. Thank you. Okay. okay, guys, thank you. So thank we look you. forward to seeing you and watch the channel, and you'll see your in leading edge cricket, cricket academy. academy. Yes. Yeah, okay, right. guys, thank you very much. You so bye bye. Much. Hi guys and welcome back to the second video of the T20 World Cup and in match number two it was Bangladesh versus Scotland and guys I just have to tell you if you did not see that game you really missed out it was a cracker of a game Scotland was up against it we weren't uh, expecting them to get over a hundred but they ended up posting a pretty decent score and the match favourites were Bangladesh, but wow, what a change of events. What do you have to say, Koji? You know, if you're a young cricketer uh, and you're out there learning about cricket, that game would have been a great one to watch, to understand the mental strength of bowlers, how they can get into a head, uh, great field insides, uh, great captaincy, uh, great leadership on the side of the field through coaches and that. I think that just gave an overall perspective of how two teams could end up having similar patterns of play during the game uh, and different tactics and scenarios and things like that. So, great, great game. Cracker. It was a ripper or a puller, you choose. Exactly. It was really, it was really a, a nice... It had moments where it was a little dull. It wasn't the most exciting, but it was a very technical game. It was a very shrewd game by both teams. Both bowling parties really, really came to the party. But Let's, let's shoot, K kick it off, Coach. What do you think? Let's yeah. Give your opinion on, on your team uh, and my team. Where are, we, where are you feeling? What are we feeling? So, guys, just to mention before we before we start into the analysis, don't forget that we have a Udemy course that is out there for anyone to purchase if you want to improve your cricket batting and become the ultimate batter. The course is there, guys. It's on a big sale at the moment, so make sure you go and check it out. Go and get the course if you want to become better. But talking about the game tonight, um, the pitch in the first game, this was the same field, same pitch, but the pitch in game one was obviously lively. It was a new pitch, first game on it, the heat was baking down on it. And the second game, it was, it was a completely different game. I mean, to bat and ball on that pitch was not easy. No. Things were really tough out there, so batsmen had to work hard for their runs. But, um, bowlers couldn't be uh, a centimetre off their lines and lengths, because otherwise they would travel. So the second game was far more challenging. Bit of dew on the pitch, on the grass, so the ball started getting wet. And I'm not going to go into too much detail about it. But Scotland ended up batting first. And they posted 140 for 9 after 20 overs. Doesn't sound like a bad score by today's standards, but where they were in the beginning, I think at one point they were 55 runs for six wickets. Yeah, they're in So they were in some real deep trouble. But talking about a bit of Scotland's batting, they started off very slow. There was no rotation of strike, there was no nothing. Their two opening batsmen were just looking to slog and hit the ball as far as they could out of the park, which is not the game of cricket. Some games you come off like that, other games you have to work for your runs and rotate and run good between the wickets. Um, and the captain of Scotland, Kyle Kutzer, he went early for zero. There's, he, he didn't even use his feet. That's what Coach Allen and I saw in the Scotland's innings. Guys, you have to move your feet if you want to get to the ball. Especially at this level where the guys are bowling much quicker, far more skillful, you need to move your feet. And there wasn't a lot of foot movements in the game. And also, uh, Bangladesh, they bowled pretty well, so the batsmen were struggling to face the swing. 
They weren't quite understanding how to face the swing. They were quite slow and sluggish. So I'm going to hand it over to Coach Allen to talk about a bit of the bowling from a Bangladesh point of view. Yeah, oh, thanks, Coach. So Bangladesh for me today were, were really they were stand out. So if you look at the game that we'd watched prior in a, the previous um, a video video that you would have watched, uh, what Bangladesh had that they didn't have is they had pace. They had some really good pace. If you look at this youngster that opened Taskin. Uh, he was putting the ball between 142 and 148 k's an hour on a pitch slightly skiddy, uh, not much bounce, but coming on nice and hard. Um, great. You look at so for me, the bowlers in Bangladesh really put the hammer down on on, on the Scots. They really put them under pressure. Um, the Scots tactic, from what I can see, is they went up front with their big hitters, and their big hitters just wanted to stand, swing hard, and hit big. Um, and they missed for me. Yeah. Uh, and my criticism, and, and I humbly apologize, uh, I'm not the Scottish um, tacticians, was they threw away six runs and over for the first six overs. So you work out how much did they lose by just swing and miss, swing and miss, big, big uh, shots which they didn't really pull off. Um, I would have gone back, quickly switched tactic there and then, and, and, and pushed around the singles and played around the singles because the Bangladeshis were really bowling well. You look at uh, Taskin was bowling brilliant, really quick. Uh, Mr. Fizu, Mr. Fizu, yeah, yeah, the first. Uh, yeah, f the first. Yeah. Um, so if you ever look at it again, all of these guys. Let's go. Safudin. Uh, you look at Shakib Mahedi, Afif. The spin bowlers, the quickies, the seamers, what did they all do well? Fantastic lines, bold channels, in the block, used variation well, great lengths, great line, put the batsman under pressure all the time, varied every ball. The, the, the Scots didn't know what was coming at them in the first 10 overs or so. So just really, 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 really good. Um, you know, from, from a notes perspective, just having a look at our roadshow, uh, by the end of the power play, it's got an only had 39. So um, it was one of those things where the Bangladesh really put the pressure on. So my thought was, if their bowling attack was so good, uh, their fielding was good, um, that they'd come out the blocks and bat as well. And I thought, you know, game over for Scotland. How, how mistaken was I? Cricket's a funny old game. Uh, let's let's ask. Uh, Coachy, what he thinks. I, I, but before I do that, special congratulations. Let's go to Shakib. He's taken more wickets, okay, in T20 than anybody else. He is the top wicket taker in T20, okay. He went past Lasif Malinga. Just to put in perspective, that's how good this guy is. So when you're playing a guy like this, the Scots had to use their feet. They had to be inventive. They don't use the feet. And only towards the end, uh, and Coach will touch on that, some of the other guys to the back end came in using their feet and changed the dynamics a little bit and the result was as a result of that. But we've watched the first two games. A lot of guys are rusty, I think. Struggling for a bit of form. Guys, if you are, useful tip from Coach and I. Don't be scared to use your feet. Get your feet to the ball. Don't stand and just back your hands. Uh, if you haven't played cricket for a while, get the foot to the ball, hit through the ball, because that way at least you're moving, and if you're moving, your time will improve. If you're just swinging, you're missing, you're just going to get frustrated, you're going to dig yourself in the hole. And I think that's what happens uh, just now, which I'll discuss when uh, we talk about Mandesh Bratty. But let's swing it over to Kochi. What do you think, Kochi? Yeah, look, guys, just from the Scotland's batting point of view, uh, Coach uh, touched on it briefly about the singles. There wasn't a lot of rotational strike in the Scottish batting innings up front. Obviously because they were trying to rebuild and set up a good innings. And there wasn't any partnerships to talk about except for Greaves. Chris Greaves and Watt. They started rebuilding the innings towards the end. And I think the both of them played a very clever role. Understanding that their team is in trouble and that they need to stay there until the end so that the uh, Scottish could have a decent score to defend. So well done to Chris Greaves. He ended up scoring 45 of 28 balls. Considering the circumstances he was under, I think he did extremely well. Same goes out to Watt. Uh, really good stuff from them. 
And yeah, I think that it wasn't a bad bad performance all around, considering it's the first game for the Scottish and all the rest. Um, I think as for all the teams as it goes on the tournament, they'll they'll just get better and yeah. better and better. The coaches would have made notes. Uh, next practice session, okay, boys, <laughs> what can we work on? What can we do better? What have we been doing good? And we just stick to that. So I think not a bad performance by the Scots. I would have really have thought that Bangladesh should have taken it, but so be it. Um, yeah, so I'm going to flip now to the Scots bowling. Um, and the thing is, the Scots, they actually bowled, I think, really well. They, and, they stepped up to the plate. They did exactly what Bangladesh did. Yeah. And when they bowled, they did exactly the same thing. They came in guns blazing up front. They were in up front, yeah. centered in their faces. Yeah. And that's the thing, as Coach Allen said, the Scots kept the big guns in the Bangladeshi side quiet. Like Shakib Alassan, Mustafa... Uh, um, uh, Mamadula, Mamadula yeah. all these guys, they kept them quiet, which is not normally what happens. I mean, someone like Shakib al he is he, is, he expresses himself and he whacks the ball all over the park. So, I think Scotland did a very good job in keeping them quiet. And the wickets started falling because they were creating a lot of pressure. The runs weren't coming easily. So, what would happen? They would have to end up buying their runs to yeah. try and get the scoreboard ticking. And fielding from Scotland, I think, was also, it was very good. Obviously, a few mistakes here and there, a few misfeels from the captain and, you know, generally how it, how it goes. But I think from a fielding and bowling perspective from the Scots, I think they did a very good job overall. Um, and talking about Chris Greaves yet again, he also bowled extremely well. Leg spin, um, he got the wicket of Shakib Alassane, which I thought was a shocker of a ball. I think short. it was short, half tracker, I think it about bounced twice, but you know what they're saying in cricket, the bad balls get the wickets, yeah. and that's clearly what happened this evening. So Chris Greaves ended on two wickets for the evening, which I think is a great effort, um, and they, they created a lot of pressure, therefore the wickets just fell like flies. And Brad Wheel, well, let's just talk about Brad Wheel, right on pace bowler. Not easy to be a pace bowler in a T20 World Cup because it's extra pace. The ball just flies off the bat, goes for four in a blink of an eye. So he ended on three wickets for 24 runs after his four overs. So I think he had a great bowling performance. And I think overall the Scots, they were the better team on the day. Yeah, I think for me, the, the, they, they, they realized that they had a problem. So they stuck with the game plan. Um, they must have done, they just all pulled in and they said to the bowlers, as a fielding unit, we'll back you, put the pressure on them, they'll make the mistakes. And like you said, you've got great back. And Bangladesh is, they're known to be the giant slayers. I mean, come on, guys, these guys have taken out Australia. They, these guys are real, they're proper. It's a really great side. Mm. So I think for me, what happened is it could be a combination of things that they were just a little rusty. Um, uh, maybe a little first day nerves, something like that. I wasn't sure. But they had a bit of poor execution, bad such a shot selection, um, you know, a little bit of lack of footwork, a little scratchy and that sort of thing. Cost them a couple of wickets. No, they're just dug themselves into a hole. They cost them a couple of wickets up early, like the, the, the Scots did, and suddenly they were in a hole, suddenly under pressure. Yeah. In comes the number two and three, or number three and fours. Uh, they're scratching for a bit of form. They're trying to rebuild their innings. And before you know it, you're into 10 overs, you haven't got much score. And then it's a play and catch up. And then they had a little miss, middle order fall apart. Yeah, Again, big collapse. let's give credit where credit's due. They're a really accomplished little batting unit. But Scotland really put the hammer down. They had the killer instinct. They put the foot on the throat and they kept on applying the pressure throughout the game. I think you played with Chris Greaves for a while at the club. Yeah. No, you, you played with Chris, so you know. Determined, dogged, he's going to get in there, he's going to fight like the rest of the Scottish team. They are going to fight to the end. And it was really nice to see it. And I, I must be honest and tell you that you look at Mamadoula, he was out in 23. Um, so you look at 18 runs for our fifth. But you look at the collapse after that, you roll these people 17th over in, 18th over out. One over Not in, like big partnerships. No big partnerships. No partnerships for. Nothing really formed. Um, Old uh, Fizz, Fuzz, Fizz, what they call him, his nickname, 
Anyway, Mr. Fizz. Mr. Fizz, okay. He made a little cameo fight right up front, trying to sort of fight for the Indians and that sort of thing. So again, uh, the guys, I think it was a good game. So from a tactical point of view, both games, if you were watching that game as youngsters or coaches or whatever, trying to pick up tips and things, if your bowlers do their job, doesn't matter how good the batting team is, you will put them under pressure so long as your fielders can back you. And when you get the chance to bat, think, use your feet, get stuck in, don't be afraid to take the bowler on. We've seen it now in two games where the bowlers dominate the batsmen, they get into the batsman's headspace, they dominate. The batsmen need to be more courageous, step out of their creases, use their feet, and go and hit the ball and hit it really hard. Go big or go home, guys. Have no fear. Play no fear cricket. It's the World Cup, for heaven's sakes. You want to get further down the competition. Be bold. Don't be scared. Wickets are going to go. That's cricket. But go and make a calculated attack at the bowler. Yeah, exactly. What do you say, Coach? I know we're going to do a whole bunch of things, and I know you're going to tell about subscribing all those things. No, no, no. You know, and what else do you have to say in terms of closing? Guys, for me, I'm wrapping up. I'm saying thanks very much for watching. More coming tomorrow. Remember what you're going to do. Coach is going to tell you, but we really appreciate all your support. Um, keep the comments coming. Thanks very much. Over to Coach. You just wrap it up for us today. Yeah, so guys, so just, to, just to tell you, Scotland ended up winning by six runs. So from where they were, very well done to win the game. Um, I think there will be a lot of confidence going into the training camps coming up yep. and further games ahead. But no, otherwise, I think that's it for me. Just a good bowling performance from Scotland. Batting, obviously, they can always work on that. Fielding was pretty decent. Good catches, a couple of good catches this yeah, evening yeah. on the boundary. Yeah. You know, catch it on the boundary, toss it back up, in. and get it back in, and the batsman's out. But otherwise, guys, that's it from tonight. Uh, Coach Adam and I are going to be wrapping off now, and we'll see you tomorrow for more videos. We're going to be bringing you two videos every single day. So make sure that you keep a lookout for Leading Edge Cricket Academy. Make sure you subscribe and put on your notification bell so that you don't miss a video when we upload one. You automatically get a notification. You just get onto your phone, click on the screen, and you can watch our video. And guys, if there's anything that you want to watch or you want, to, uh, you want us to give you a shout out, put your comments down below so that we can see what you want us to do. Uh, but otherwise, that's it from us. Please like this video and share. And until next time, we'll see you tomorrow.